the weather is always changing. The roads, they're getting longer. The hunts, they're getting harder. But this is what we do. This is my team. And this is the flight. Was also brought to you by Falling Feathers Game Calls, Spectra Shot, Mike Reynolds Incorporated, AB Lanyards, Kaminsky Development, The DeWitt Company, Big Buck Creations, Wildlife Taxidermy, Four Corners Development, Native Performance Dog Food, and by Lacrosse. during early teal season. Not very many people hunt blue wing teal, number one. Uh, obviously, most of the seasons take place in September and early October. We try to do this every year, but this season, the temperatures were over 100, and the teal actually had migrated to their nesting ground two weeks late the previous year, so the migration of blue wings didn't happen like it normally does. The weather this year was crazy hot. It was like in the triple digits and we just had a hard time getting on the field. This till season, man, did we have our work cut out for us. Generally, we hunt big bodies of water or flood ditches. They just was not there. With the 100 degree temperatures that we had around here, we had to travel. There are times when you go early till hunting, you get up with a lot of expectations. Sometimes you don't even see a bird, but we don't let that discourage us. We get right back at it. So we loaded up everything and we headed north to around Kansas City, Carrollton County, to River Ridge Outfitters and Jamie Foley. When we got there, we had to go on a scouting mission. We were right along the Missouri River on a peninsula in a big washout, and there was probably 50 or 60 teals sitting on it. So we get out there in the afternoon and we're thinking, well, we're just going to wait out here in our, in our lacrosse waders and put the decoys out. Well, three steps out into it, and you were fixing to go under. So I'm pulling off my waders and Larry and Roy are back there, they're talking about something and I don't know what they're talking about, but apparently they took a vote that we were gonna tie these decoys on a, like a trot line and we had a breaker bar in the back of Roy's truck, we tied it to the end of it and I was gonna swim these decoys out.
coming in today, out of this front, they can go smack. Beautiful bird. This portion of the Flight TV is brought to you by Native Performance Dog Food. Today we're going to talk about fleas and ticks. This is Joey. Uh, he is a duck retriever, but all dogs have the potential of having fleas. They get fleas obviously from outside generally. They can bring those fleas indoors and basically fleas not only pester the dog by sucking blood 24 hours a day, uh, but they can also transmit diseases and create wounds on the dogs. They can develop allergies to the fleas. And so basically it's one of the most common things that we see in the summertime uh, is flea related disease. Ticks, they are also really bad, but they tend to be more seasonal. Uh, depends on the area of the country that you're at. And unfortunately, as I'd say in the past 20 years, we've become aware of numerous diseases that ticks do transmit, and some of them obviously are transmissible to humans, like Lyme disease, which can be very debilitating for both the dog and the owner. So fleas, when they jump on your pet, well literally, they, they're, they're shaped where they can just go right through the hair follicles, and they bite numerous times per day, and dogs are allergic to the flea saliva. So when they get red skin and, and develop an allergy to this bite, they can become very miserable even with just a few fleas, whereas other dogs may not have that kind of sensitivity uh, and can be covered with fleas and not itch at all. It's opening weekend of big duck season and we are stoked. We look forward to this all year long and it's finally here. This year was harder than normal because where we usually launch the boat, about eight miles north of where we're setting up and we drift down river, it's a beautiful boat ride, there was a humongous tree that we could not get around. We just couldn't do it. So we had to come up with plan B and we actually didn't have a plan B. So we get over there, obtain permission to come across this private landowner over here hook up a rope because we have got to go down a 40 foot bank. We're along a major river channel in southeast Missouri. And the reason we hunt this river is because we're about two miles as the crow fly flies from a major conservation area. Now if we was to hunt this today, we probably wouldn't kill a duck. But when the steel starts flying tomorrow, there'll be ducks all over the place looking for a safe place and we usually tear them up. Normally where we would cross, which would be about hip deep, the water was almost over all of our waders. So we didn't know if, you know, the way the water fluctuated on the river that we'd even be able to get to hunt the next day. Even though it was a physically challenging hunt, we didn't stop, we went hunting anyway.
So now we're off about 50 miles south of where we were hunting at on the river to a buddy of ours, Brad Eddington. He's got a family farm and it's all flooded timber. And he called us and said, hey, listen, there's a blind in there. It hadn't been hunted in a few years. Can we go brush it in? We said, sure. So we loaded up the boat, me, Larry, and Roy took off down south right on the Arkansas line. Now, you gotta understand that Missouri is put into sections. And what I mean by that is they have a north zone, a middle zone, and a south zone. So while the north zone and the middle zone duck season was open, we were about a day and a half being ready for the south zone to have their opening day of duck season. So we went down there in the boat, we pulled out the chainsaws, and we brushed this blind in the day before. We put out our hardcore decoys that first morning, and we kind of went to a little bit of extremes on the decoys. We were trying to block them on one side and fill the other side up where they would land right in front of the blind. We're going to hunt in a family hole. Brad has three kids, Jake, Madison, Paige, and they love to duck hunt. But the most memorable part of this whole hunt is Jake. Jake is ate up with duck hunt. I mean, he is duck crazy. Hunting flooding timber is every duck hunter's fantasy hunt. All right, so it's uh, November 29th. Woke up this morning about an hour north of where we're at right now. We're in the deep timber this morning in southeast Missouri. The temperatures are around 25 degrees. Had a pretty major front push right, on good. through Deep all the way through Missouri. And uh, these ducks are really flying in the timber right now. So hopefully here in a few minutes, we're gonna be able to bring you some smack em action. Got my cell phone light on. <laughs> This segment of the Flight TV was brought to you by Pacific Flyway Supplies for all your waterfowl supply needs. Just go to www.pacificflywaysupplies.com.
You know, this hunt we went on the flooded timber with Brad and his, his boy Jake, I tell you what, it's awesome to see a father and son get excited about hunting. My father died in my arms when he was 47 years old. And I tell you, I would give my left leg to have him back here with me today. But to see a young man and his dad able to go on a hunting trip together, I tell you, it touched my heart and it ought to touch yours. You gotta take this opportunity in life while you wake up every morning and you take a breath in your lungs to find your kids, to find your parents and enjoy a hunting trip together. It'll change your life, it'll change your aspect on how you look at the whole world. I enjoy duck hunting with Jake and, and my girls too, just, just for the simple fact that just seeing the excitement on their faces as the ducks are coming in and, Watching Jake learn how to use a duck call and, and just finally the other day getting to see him work his first bird and call it in and, and being able to kill it. It's just a it's just an awesome enjoyment being out here. The first time I went duck hunting was uh, I went with Uncle Freddie. We pulled in the duck the duck blind and had a bunch of vines. We started working them and the first group was a bunch of greenheads. But I didn't get my gun out quick enough. So they killed them. Then we had a bunch of gadwalls come in and I killed a gadwall drake. There were some greenheads in there with them. I killed one of those and a gadwall drake. I think part of this whole deal with this blind and this hole right here that means so much to me is I get to look back at my wife's grandparents that actually made this all possible through their hard work and, and dedication and everything. This has all been passed down to, to my wife and I'm being able to be out here to pass this on to my kids. I enjoy duck hunting because I just like getting up early in the morning, riding the truck with all the excitement that's fixing to happen. I like getting in the boat because usually where we're at, we usually jump some when we get to the blind. I like, I like to get in the blind with Dad and have a good time just killing green. Thank you.